Hi guys and welcome back to Archie Hamilton Racing and to another video where today, honestly, I am so excited. I know I get very excited in my videos, but today, oh wow, this is gonna be incredible. If you watch my Instagram stories or ever have come across it on Instagram, I am obsessed with watching police programs. Traffic cops, you name it, I watch it all, police interceptors, and I always say how much I love it. Me personally, I race hard on the track, I love racing on the track, but I also am massively passionate about road safety. I'm not one of those people that you'll see flying down the road at 100 miles an hour. I very much stick to the limit on the road and enjoy just cruising. That's what I love. And today, what I'm gonna get the chance to do is spend some time with the police. I'm going to see the guys at Surrey Police in the traffic department, and I'm gonna get a chance to not only take you guys behind the scenes and see more about it, but I'm spending the day in the back of a police car. <laughs> oh, I cannot wait. Unmarked cars traffic cars, I'm gonna get the chance to experience it. And I'm like a kid at Christmas. The moment I knew it was happening, I could not wait to share it. But what we're gonna get the chance to see also is all of their cars. We're gonna have a little tour into their world and I can't wait. So let's get going. Right, we're inside, here we go. Oh yes, I feel like a kid at Christmas. I've got my mask on, but here we go. Can't wait, we're gonna be going out shortly in the in the car. We're actually going out first with an unmarked car. We're gonna show you a couple of the others, and then we're gonna show you an unmarked car later on in this video. But yeah, all very exciting. I'm gonna introduce you to Dan, who's actually gonna be showing us inside here, but it's so, so cool. We have the police bikes which are here, which are very cool, all in line. We're not going out on one of these today. I'm gonna to be going out in a car, but I do like the bikes. They are cool to see. And then what we have over here, is a couple of marked cars. These are the traffic cars. We're gonna find more about these in just a second, about what they have on them, etc. And then we will be going out in an unmarked car, which is just next to me. Here you go, here's Dan. Hello, mate. How are we? Good. Nice to see you. Welcome to the Rose Policing at Burfham. Sorry, police. How are you doing? I am so excited. I know you are. <laughs> We've been waiting quite a long time to get this done, so it's nice that you're finally here to enjoy it with us. So thanks for coming. Yeah. Um, I know you've had a little bit of a tour around the garage and we're going to go around some of the stuff that we do uh, on the roads very shortly but I um, thought I'd just show you around a couple of our cars so these are two of our cars that um, you're going to get to have a look at today and um, the plan really be just come out and see what we do yeah we have a little bit of uh, interaction with some of your viewers and see what their questions might be if they've got any anything that they want to know what we do maybe dispel some myths that they're not aware of um, yeah and yeah just generally take you out enjoy the day with us, hopefully show you what we do and um, just have a really good experience of what race policing is all about. Yeah, because I, I am massively passionate about police cars, traffic cars, yeah. everything. Can you talk us around one of your cars? This is one of our newest ones that we've got on the fleet, which is a 70 plate, it's a 5 series, a 530 diesel. Um, this is a 3 litre variant, this one. Uh, this is obviously one of the nicer ones we've got because it's new, but um, as you can see, we've got one next to us that's a, a slightly older variant. Again, that's a 530, uh, but a 66 plate. Uh, all carry exactly the same kit, uh, have very, very similar capabilities in terms of road performance and driving, but just yeah. slightly older. Uh, so let's take you around, take you around to the back of this car. Well, we can't just go straight to the back. We need to have a look oh, at these, right. these cameras. Yeah, so these are the AMPR cameras that we have. You'll see that there's one on each side, uh, which covers both sides of the road. Uh, any cars that drive past these cameras that uh, might have no insurance, for example, no tax, no MOT, that kind of stuff, uh, they will flag up on these if, uh, if they don't have that. Yeah. So those are the two back ones. Yeah. Uh, in the back seat. Really All right. Very normal, nothing really to shout about. We carry a uh, first aid kit in the back uh, for anything that we go to that we might need. First Didn't know that. Door. So that's that, that's a very small little one in there. Let's come through to the front. Oh, open up this door. oh yes, here we go. I'll jump in with you. Oh. So this is, uh, this is the, the cockpit, if you like, of our traffic cars. Uh, you'll get to see a little bit more of that when we go out on the road. but. It's all the same as what you'd get if you bought one directly from BMW, minus obviously the, the kit that we've got in here. Oh, so we've got various different bits. Look at the buttons. This is a, uh, the main screen. When you come out of us, you'll see what, what goes on on here. This allows us to do certain things with the car. And then we've got all of our buttons on here. 
we've got front spots so this is if you're going down an alleyway or something or a dark area it's got really bright lights that are on top of the car rear guard these are rear reds and rear blues so when we're stopped on the main carriageway uh, we put those on to warn traffic behind us that we're there just to give us a bit of margin of safety yeah and you've got front blues obviously self-explanatory uh, the siren and your 999 button so if we hit that that turns everything on all together is that is that like we're on a mission yeah so look, do you want me to put it on <laughs> Yep. Oh my! Oh wow! So you that is that is we are we're on a mission. I bet that's a quick car. It is fast, yeah. Um, obviously, sometimes it, we are required to drive a little bit faster to get to an incident yeah. if it is something that requires, you know, somebody's life is in danger. Um, so yeah, they are they are fast, but we go through a lot of training, a lot of driver training. So uh, much like I'm taking the wheel today. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, I'm not. So this is the X5, or one of our X5s. As you can see, it's an unmarked. It doesn't have any uh, police markings on it at all. So as we've already said, you wouldn't know that it was a police car. I mean, you you wouldn't know. No, uh, we use these a lot for uh, when we're driving around. There, there's a lot of chance to um, catch people on their phones, for example, um, or if we're on a specific operation that requires us to be unmarked, where yeah important for us to remain that a little bit anonymous these are the perfect cars for that so um, we've got a number of them in the fleet this is just one of them which will be coming out with us in today i mean you would know <laughs> you would have no idea this is another one of our unmarked this is a, a slightly different one it's an audi uh, this is a quattro again a great car for us uh, operationally we use these quite a lot um, great car to drive as well and then yeah. Again, a very normal, but very but normal. I bet that's quick. It, yes, it is quick. Yeah, again, this is a Quattro variant, so you've got the added bonus of all the traction and stuff with the car. So, yeah, that's cool. Can we have a look inside it? Yeah, of course. Is it is it exactly the same inside than uh, the? Uh, all the specs are very similar inside, so you see quite familiar what you've seen in the other. I'm cars. going in, Dan. We've got um, the screens in there, which we'll take you through shortly. What's uh, this? What's this? Buttons. What's this? So that's for uh, measuring speed. So we're able to measure somebody's speed over a distance and time and get an accurate reading because ah. all, all of the speedos are all calibrated in our vehicles. So uh, we're able to get an accurate reading of how fast somebody's going using that device. At that point you're going, Alpha Delta, Bra Alpha Delta Bravo, we have a, an emergency. But there is different communications different for different things, right? You'll hear throughout when we're in the cars, there's different ways of speaking and there's different uh, sort of... Uh, so like, if there's like a full on chase, you have a word. People, well, there's different things that we can say to, uh, you know, to alert people or, or say which direction it's going. And you'll hear if on the motorway, there's different uh, areas of the motorway, which we use as marker points, references, so people know where we are, which will sound very strange. You, and you don't just say we're at junction nine. No, we say all, all sorts of different things which people won't understand, but we'll explain it. Okay. Love that. Yeah. An overview, which is wide angle, looking forward. That's more for just a bit like a normal public dash cam. Um, yeah. Then you've got this one that, is just like the overview but a bit more zoomed in for a bit more detail and then this car's got this um, high def front facing camera which can see about three lanes worth of traffic so left middle and right wow um, but it is that it's picking up absolutely everything on that yeah. uh are you allowed a coffee in your hand yes, yes so long as it doesn't affect how you drive oh uh, yeah so obviously if you're doing something with this hand that yeah. means that you obviously can't then most people are right-handed so they'll hold a coffee cup in the right hand yeah um, and therefore they can't change gear if you've got a manual because obviously you'd have to take both hands off the wheel to do that uh, but also like eating an apple peeling a pear i had you peel a pear with one hand yeah uh, so and you can like think of it the same as changing your air conditioning or your radio settings in the car it's, just, it's designed to be like move, change, straight yeah. back to the steering Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, anything where, which requires you to concentrate more than that or fiddle through menus, um, you shouldn't be doing because it's yeah, yeah, yeah. where your steering starts to, to wander. Right, Dan, what have we got? So this is what we use on a day-to-day -day basis. So this is a mobile data terminal. It's just a mobile phone, but it's got uh, an app that we use which has everything that we need on it. So you can see on here, these are different things we can click on. So statements, uh, police statements, use of force, but things like collision reports, uh, vehicle searches. So as we're driving around like we are now, uh, we've got the ability to look at vehicles, find out who's got it, who's insured it, where it's registered to, all that kind of stuff uh, right from here. So we don't have to call up and do anything, which is great when you're double crewed like we are today. Uh, Dan can drive and I can sit and run cars through to find out if there's any issues. 
Yeah. Your blues activated. So, no, this driver in front of us, and we've just been nine, beside nine, her. She's nine, uh, activated. She's on a mobile phone while she's driving along the motorway doing 55, 60 miles an hour. Um, so, we're just going to put her over and have a chat with her about uh, uh, what she's doing. See road here, as you can see. There we go. Just literally pulled over. Got the reds on everybody. Those are cool. But anyway, he's just having a quick word. So that female that we just stopped on the M25, um, she's been dealt with. Uh, she's been issued a ticket for uh, driving, uh, not having proper control of her vehicle. Um, that's all been done on this that we showed you earlier on. So the offence has been completed and um, she's been sent off for the consideration of giving her three points and a hundred pound fine for driving whilst not in control. She's on a motorway driving with a phone in her hand when we were behind her she was driving at about 40 miles an hour so you know she's impeding other traffic and causing a danger to other people by not okay so what's people. what 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 is the rule with being on a sat nav and being on a phone everyone will want to know this yeah. and even i don't have a clue so with there, a, there must be a difference right so with a sat nav obviously your sat nav's mounted to your dashboard somewhere ideally out of the view of your main driver screen so you've got good vision of the road ahead um, if you are tapping away on your sat nav uh, on the screen technically there could be a point in which you're not in proper control of your vehicle because you're not giving full control full uh, appreciation of the road ahead in front of you um, so that's a sort of that's a different offense to driving whilst on your phone if you're driving whilst on your phone up to your face fully engaged in the conversation you are putting not only yourself at risk but every other driver that's in front of you or behind you at risk because your ability to make any decision whilst you're traveling at speed is massively impaired whilst you're driving whilst on your phone and um, we're doing 90 at the moment constant speed behind him uh, you'll notice that we're not right up to his bumper we're letting him have enough gap distance and um, he's still around us so uh, the driver's pulled in directly behind us now so he'll follow us to a suitable location um, and once we're at a safe location get to speak to him we will go and have a chat about his feet someone's been pulled over he's doing very quick he was tanking on at about 90 and then it went over 100 and then he was just going and going and going so that was quick, Dan. That was quick, yeah. So, um, yeah, we've got him at 100. Um, That's fast. Which is, which is way too quick. He's traveling way too quickly in excess of the speed limit. And as I said to you before, any time that he would need to, to brake or do anything to try and control that vehicle, potentially he's gonna put himself at risk by flipping that car if he's got to stop, or but ultimately, if he crashes into someone at that speed, those speeds can be catastrophic. Okay, um, so, so quick one, on. what people wanna know, he got pulled at 100. Yeah. What happens now? 
So uh, my colleague Dan will go and speak to him. Um, at that speed that he's been uh, clocked at driving, uh, it's likely that he'll be reported to court for that offence. You go um, to court for 100? Yeah, so he'll get he'll get sent to court. Um, at court, he will have an opportunity to footage. explain himself. He'll have an opportunity to see the footage that we've got, because as we said before, we've got the cameras and stuff that are all up here. Um, and the court will make a decision as to what happens, but it's likely that he will have his licence endorsed or if he's got points already, he could face a ban, disqualification, all that type of stuff. Um, he looks like a fairly young chap. He's, yeah, he's a, um, yeah, he's a young chap. You so might have just got his licence. Essentially, I, I don't know what the situation with him, but again, this is an enforcement thing for us. It's an educational thing for him as well, because he looks, yeah, I'd say like early 20s. You can lose your licence so fast yeah. without realising you could just be going a little bit too fast and, and like oh. the, the point that we want to try and, and get is like even that extra little bit of speed um, it, to, yeah. what, to what you might think might not be that much, uh, that one second of uh, slight distraction or something that happens. Might kill a family. Might kill a family, uh, you know, you, it could kill you. It, it's not just everyone else, it's um, it's really not worth it. Just take that extra little bit of speed off and stick in with, within the limits um, just to protect you and to protect everybody else. So we've just jumped out of the x5 it was so fun just to be in the back of the car and see what these guys do for me it's a real eye-opener because we've all seen our phone flash up when we're driving we've all thought about going for it it's <laughs> yeah it is it is the difference between having an accident and potentially not having an accident and it's really interesting to hear about the stopping distances all of these different things it, it's an eye-opener and uh I just think road safety is so important, but we've all been there. We have all been there, if it's traffic or everything else. Um, but yeah, anyway, what we also saw as well was uh, someone going over 100 miles an hour uh, there. So that was interesting to see that. Um, to be honest with you, it might, it might sound completely crazy because I race cars, I do, you know, go fast on the track. But I, on the road, I do just like to chill out. But that was quite fast. But anyway, we are going to swap cars. We have... A different car, me and Dan are heading out, aren't we Dan? We are indeed, yeah, swapped over cars. We're, we are not unmarked. No, we're not, very, very much not unmarked. <laughs> so you'll notice a big difference in the, um, how people drive when we're driving one of these compared to what you've just experienced. Yeah. People see this coming from a mile away because it is so bright and very loud. Um, but that in itself is a good thing because that promotes people to drive safer because we're there and we're an active present on the roads and presence on the roads people aren't going to drive yes. in a manner that's unsafe because they see us and it's a preventative, preventative thing. What we're actually going to do is if you have any questions for Dan or any of the other from Surrey, Surrey Police, we're probably going to do a Q&A because we've got, I was just talking to you about 4D number plates, yeah. we were just talking about different things like that, there's probably a lot of things that you guys might be interested in if it's, uh, if you have any questions, uh, fire them in if it's to my Instagram etc and we can potentially do a Q&A because I don't really know the law half the time and you know it's ever changing yeah, right, it it's changing and you don't want to get caught out and you don't want to have your get done for this or get done for that or modify a car and not be insured yeah. modify a car and you know lose your license all of this stuff we're potentially going to do a Q&A further down the line so if there are any questions fire it to my Instagram and we can do it because like I said it's changing all the time isn't it yeah absolutely we're on a blue run here we go 10 white 4 6 10 white 4 6 Uh, there's an RTC, uh, a blue run. And what's going on then? Uh, so we're just going to report of a potential cloned vehicle. Uh, the vehicle's got a uh, mark on it that it might have been cloned. So, so we're just going to head up there and check it out, see if we can get it. It might be the genuine vehicle, which does happen quite often, um, but we will try and ascertain whether or not it's the, uh, the genuine or not. Um, we'll go from there. Oh, it's a late one. It's a late one. Stop. Oh, 
hold the line. That plate, a van has the wrong plate on it potentially. He's got a plate on his car that doesn't match up with what he's driving. So he's driving a white Mercedes. Attention. Um, but the, the actual index or the license plate comes back to a completely different vehicle. So it's showing us no insurance, uh, but it could be a little bit more than that because the, the van is completely different to what's on the plate. So we'll see, we'll pull him over and see what he's got to say. It's pulled over and now I'm in the car. We have the lights on, the blues are on. Could have an update, Dan? Uh, yeah, so that one, uh, that one's all in order. Uh, we pulled it, the gentleman over on the hard shoulder and uh, it's all in order. He's got insurance, we checked his insurance documentation. In this case, this is a clerical error on the insurance company's behalf. They haven't updated their, he's got a cherished transfer or a private number plate, so he just hasn't updated the, the insurance. But um, he's shown me a proof of insurance documentation for that vehicle with that BRM. So he's all in order and we've let him go.